This is demystifying the legislative process, and we're going to cover these topics. Most of it is going to be the steps in the legislative process. It's going to cover identifying key legislators, a little bit about submitting testimony, and then the human dimension. So here's a warning. I'm going to repeat myself because some of you may not be familiar with some of these terms, and I'm going to try to get you to be familiar with them. So if you're trying to get a bill passed, the object is to get 40 people to agree, 40 people in the legislature. That's a majority of the 51 members of the House. The majority is 26. A majority of the 25 members of the Senate, so majority is 13. Plus the governor has to be on board. So it's 26 plus 13 plus one is 40 people. It's hard to get six people to agree on whether to eat ham or turkey for dinner on Christmas. So getting 40 people to agree is pretty tough. The legislative session to me is like football. There's the first half. And in the first half, the bills that are introduced by House representatives, which are called House bills, generally those House bills are in the House, and the House is reviewing those bills. Uh, the Senate bills are being reviewed by the Senate. In the second half, the House bills that are still alive move over to the Senate, generally, generally speaking, and the Senate bills that are still alive move over to the House. So in football, at the end of the second half, if the score is tied, there's overtime. Uh, in the legislature, there's always overtime. The state constitution gives the legislature a lot of discretion about how it wants to operate. But there are two requirements that are important to remember. The first is that in order to pass the legislature, a bill must pass three readings in the House and three readings in the Senate. A reading is a vote. So it's a vote by the entire House or the entire Senate. Votes in committee don't count. The second requirement is that a bill has to pass the House and Senate in the same form in order to pass the legislature. So exactly the same wording. Let me go through some terminology. A bill is a document. It's a proposal. Uh, you may have heard of resolutions, but I'm going to be talking mostly about bills. Only bills can become law. They affect people, organizations, or government agencies. There are standing committees in the House and in the Senate. They're organized by subject, for example, economic development or tourism. There are 18 of these standing committees in the House and 16 in the Senate. They're usually just called committees. After bills are introduced, they're referred to committee for consideration. The committees do most of the work in the legislature. A bill can have a signal referral, for example, EET. EET means the Senate Energy Economic Development and Tourism Committee. So in this case, the bill is referred to only that committee. Most bills have a double referral, for example, EET comma WAM. WAM means Ways and Means. So for this double referral, the comma means that it's a sequential referral. The bill will go to EET first, and if EET approves it, it'll go to WAM for review. In some occasions, bills are triple referred, EET, comma, CPN, comma, WAM. Triple referrals are difficult to pass because of time constraints. The comma means that it's sequential. If there's a slash between committees, it means that it's a joint referral. So the two committees will meet at the same time. A public hearing is a meeting called by a committee to review bills. The public can submit 
testimony on the bills and the committee will make decisions on whether to pass the bills or not. All the deadlines are in a legislative calendar. So you can get the legislative calendar from the legislature's website. It's a button in the upper left-hand corner. I'm just gonna be talking in this presentation about a few of the deadlines and they're all related to bills. First is the bill introduction cutoff deadline. So the session starts on January 19th. The cutoff deadline is on January 26th. House and Senate members can introduce bills until January 26th. There are limits in the House as to how many bills each House member can introduce. And I think there's some limits in Senate too, but it's um, unlimited for the first few days. Anyway, by January 27, we'll know the universe of bills that will be considered by the 2022 legislature. The lateral filing deadline is on February 17th. It's the date that the next to last committee has to hold a public hearing on a bill, make a decision, and the chair of that committee has to file a committee report with the chief clerk. So for double referral bills, it means that the first committee has to finish its work by February 17th. There's a lateral filing deadline in the first half and the, a lateral filing deadline in the second half. It's called a lateral because it means the bill moves within the same chamber. It doesn't advance to the next chamber. So it's, it's moving laterally. And the, the filing deadline is there because there's a lateral deadline where the whole chamber has to vote on the bill, which is the next day, February 18th. The decking deadline is on March 4th. It's when the final committee has to have a hearing on the bill, make a decision, and the committee chair files a bill with the chief clerk. The decking deadline, March 4th, is the first decking deadline. It's the decking deadline in the first half of the session. There's another decking deadline in the second half. The crossover line is when the entire House or entire Senate has to pass a bill at third reading. The crossover deadline in the first half is March 10th, and there's a crossover deadline in the second half. So I'm talking about deadlines now. It's the last day that something has to happen to a bill in order for it to remain alive. That and can be taken sooner than the deadline, but no later than the deadline. There's a lot of information on the legislature's website, capital.hawaii.gov. So if you haven't gone to that website, just go there, play around. There's no charge. You can get the text of bills. You can search for bills by word like environment. You can get legislative history of bills. You can track bills. You can get hearing notices, you can get notified of hearings. If you're following a certain bill, you can put the bill number in there and get notified by email about when the hearing is. That's important because there's only a 48 hour hearing notification requirement. So hearings have to be issued only 48 hours before the bill is actually heard. So if you get this hearing notification, it gives you time to submit testimony. And you can submit testimony online. And there's the entire Hawaii revised statutes on the legislature's website. Here's the legislature's website. A lot of information and quite user-friendly. It's one of the great things about the legislature, I gotta say. So I'm gonna take an example of an imaginary bill as it goes through the legislature, Senate Bill 123. Just think of it as a piece of paper. It moves here and there, and sometimes it might get stuck somewhere. Senate Bill 123 was introduced by a senator. Introduction means that the senator submitted the bill to the chief clerk of the Senate. The chief clerk will send it to the Senate floor. 
where it'll pass first reading as a formality. It's the formal acceptance of the bill by the Senate. And hundreds of bills will pass first reading at the same time. And let's say that this bill gets a double referral, EET, comma, ways and means. So sequential referral. The first committee is EET. So the EET chair, which in this case is Senator Wakai, Senator Wakai has the power to schedule a public hearing for this bill or not. If Senator Wakai decides not to schedule a public hearing, the bill will die in committee because it can't go anywhere. If Senator Wakai schedules a public hearing, he'll issue a hearing notice and the hearing will be held. So at the hearing, there usually a number of bills that are heard. Usually committees hear testimony on all the bills. And then after all the testimony is given, the committee usually huddles just by themselves because the state sunshine law exempts the legislature. So they can do that sort of thing. And after they come out of the huddle, the chair will make a recommendation on each bill. In this case, Senator Wakai will recommend that the bill pass with or without amendments or to hold the bill. And then the committee will vote. If the committee decides to hold the bill, the bill will die there in committee. The chair can also defer decision making on a bill. And that is done sometimes because the committee is waiting for information. And after it gets the information, then it'll take action on a bill. There are other various reasons for deferral, but the chair has that power to defer it without having a vote taken. So let's say the EET committee decides to pass the bill with amendments. So that version of the bill will be known as SB 123, Senate Draft 1. And Senator Wakai will have to submit the bill to the Senate clerk by the first lateral filing deadline, February 17th. So the entire Senate will vote on this version of the bill, SB 123, SB 1. If the Senate approves it, it will have passed second reading. And the Senate has to do that by the lateral deadline, February 18th. Then the bill will go to the second committee, Ways and Means. The Ways and Means chair, Senator De La Cruz, will have the same decision that Senator Wakai had. He has to decide whether to hold a hearing on the bill or not. If he decides not to hold a hearing, the bill will die in Ways and Means. If he decides to hold a hearing, he'll issue a hearing notice, there'll be a hearing, There'll be testimony, he'll make a recommendation, the committee will vote on it. If the bill is amended, that version of the bill will be Senate Bill 123, Senate Draft 2. Senator De La Cruz will have to make the first decking deadline March 4th. We'll have to submit the committee report by that date. The entire Senate will vote on that version of the bill, SB 123, Senate Draft 2. The Senate approves it, it will have passed third reading, and the Senate has to do that by the first crossover deadline on March 10th. So that marks the first half of the legislature, the, the, the first crossover deadline. At that point, all of the Senate bills that are still alive have moved over to the House. All of the House bills that are still alive have moved over to the Senate. In the second half, SD 1, 2, 3, SD 2 is in the House. It goes through the same procedure there. It's referred to committee. The first committee chair has the option of whether to hold a hearing or not. And let's say the first committee in the House passes the bill as is. So it passed SB 1, 2, 3, the Senate draft 2 version of the bill and the committee chair has to submit a committee report 
it goes to the floor of the house. If it passes that vote, it will have passed second reading. It will go to the second committee in the house. If that committee passes the bill with amendments, that bill will be known as SB 123 SD House Draft 1. That bill, that version of the bill, will go to the entire house for a vote. If it passes, it will have passed third reading. And the house has to do that by the second crossover deadline, April 14th. So the second crossover deadline is the end of the second half. By that time, all the bills that are alive have passed three readings in the House and three readings in the Senate, satisfying that constitutional requirement. But we have to go into overtime because the Senate has passed the Senate Draft 2 version and the House has passed the House Draft 1 version. So different forms of the bill. The Senate will have a chance to agree with the House Draft 1 version. And if the Senate agrees to it, the Senate will vote on it and it will have passed the legislature. But in 99.9% .9 of the time, the Senate will disagree to the House version. So in that case, a conference committee will be formed. The conference committee will consist of House members who, who were very involved with the bill. For example, a chair of one of the committees that reviewed the bill in the House and Senate or the introducer of the bill. The object of the committee is to come to agreement, come to some kind of compromise on the bill. During the conference, the leadership in the House and Senate are making deals. For example, they might be saying, well, I like this bill, which you don't particularly like. And you like this other bill, which I don't particularly like. So let's pass both of them. So we get something. So that's the kind of horse trading that's going on around these bills that are in conference. The conference committee, if they come to an agreement, will usually come to agreement on a compromise bill. So that compromise bill will be known as SB123, SD2, HD1, Conference Draft 1. That bill will be voted on in the House and will be voted on in the Senate. And if passed in the House and passed in the Senate, then it will have passed the House and Senate in the same form. So that second requirement will be fulfilled and that bill will go to the governor for approval or veto. The governor can sign a bill, can veto a bill, or can let a bill pass without his signature. The legislature has a chance to override vetoes. In the 2021 session, just to give you an idea of the magnitude of the number of bills that are being processed, 2,820 bills were introduced, 739 were alive after the first crossover. So about one fourth were alive after the first crossover, meaning that three fourths died. 339 bills went to conference. So that means that these bills were passed by the first chamber and passed by the second chamber, but amended in the second chamber. So they went to conference. All these conference committees have different committee members. So there's this massive amount of activity during the conference period. In some cases, bills were passed by the first chamber and passed by the second chamber unamended. If that happened, those bills passed the legislature because they were not amended. And there were only about 20 of those bills in the 2021 session. So most bills go to conference. 265 bills passed the legislature. And after approval, veto, overrides and everything, finally 239 bills were enacted. So compared to the number of bills introduced, it's less than 10%. But the distribution is not random, right? It depends on how much advocates worked on the bills.
So the key deadlines, bill introduction deadline, you got to have your bill introduced in order to get it passed. First and second lateral filing deadline. So it's the deadlines the committee, committee has to meet, committees have to meet, and even the first and second decking deadlines apply to committees so you, because committee work is important. And you got to get your bill reviewed by the committee and out of the committee. Key legislators, Senate President, House Speaker, the leaders of the House and Senate, the chair of the first committee in the House and Senate, because the chair can just decide not to hear your bill and it'll die in committee. And the chair of the second committee for the same reason. So if you're meeting with legislators, these are the first ones that I would recommend that you meet with. So I'm just gonna talk a little about submitting testimony because it's so easy. On the legislature's website, there are nine buttons on the bottom. The button on the upper left is a testimony button. You just click on that. It's easy to submit testimony. You're gonna to have to register. It takes a few minutes to do that. And then there's also instructions. You click that testimony button, it'll have instructions on there. And if you have any trouble with testimony or anything else, you can go to the public access room. The green outline is around this button called links. And in that link, links button, there's the public access room. They have a separate website because there's so much information. There's a lot of information posted there. And also there's a phone number, you can call them. They're really user-friendly. So I'm gonna talk a little about the human dimension. We've been talking about the technical part of it, but really the human part is more important, although you have to know the technical part in order to be effective. So in any human organization, relationships are important. It's important to develop a good working relationship with legislators, especially the key legislators. So when I think about my good working relationships, they're based on trust, honesty, accurate information, common interests. So you can decide on your own principles of what makes a good working relationship. In some cases, um, you, you, you might be honest, but they may not be honest. But if you try to retaliate with dishonesty, it's never gonna work out. So the only hope is that if you are true to your principles. So um, democracy is messy because everybody has their own agenda. All the 76 legislators have their own agenda. The public has their own agenda. Everybody's trying to get what they want. Even Sylvia Luke, the chair of the House Finance Committee recently said, well, even legislators at times don't know what's happening because so much is happening so fast. So if at any time during the legislative process, you're confused about something, that's just normal. So I want to leave you with what Winston Churchill said about democracy. He said, democracy is the worst form of government, except for all of those other forms that have been tried from time to time. I hope you've gained something from this presentation. I hope you have a very productive 2022 session. Let's pass robust environmental legislation in 2022. And thank you for your kind attention.